lot of people think that in order to have a good heart when they're over 40, they need to be taking aspirin or baby aspirin every single day. And that was an old recommendation by the task force, but that has changed. And we need to be aware that taking a medication every single day, it's not something that we should do in our lives without a purpose. If you have a chronic condition that makes you take a medication every single day, then it's because you need it. We shouldn't be taking any medication just because I think that I might or for prevention because it's been widely shown in several studies that for prevention in people that don't have any type of cardiovascular risk or disease, aspirin doesn't need to be taken. So let's go deep into aspirin and let's see what are the risks of taking aspirin every single day. What do we know right now? Who really needs to be taking aspirin so you can know and you can work it out with your physician? So when we go and see in the history of aspirin, aspirin has been used for several years. Aspirin comes from a tree, which the molecule is called salicylic acid. Salicylic acid comes from a tree and it was used at the, at the beginning by the name of aspirin. That's why a lot of brands use the name of aspirin is not just that company, which I'm not going to mention, who owns the name, because when you go and see the original molecule by the person who took it out, he called it aspirin. Aspirin at the beginning was used for pain. It was only used for pain. And it took several years until we started realizing the other use that we use it today and why people use it most of the times and the widespread use all over the world right now for aspirin is because of that other effect that we knew after. So when people were taking aspirin in the beginning, they started realizing they started getting bruises or they were bleeding for something when they go to the dentist or whatever, they started bleeding and bleeding and bleeding more. So it took us, and there is something that it's made with every single medication that it's out there that people, then they're always under evaluation to see if there are any effects, good or bad effects in the body. So then they realized that people were bleeding more and then they started to realize and to know that aspirin affects the aggregation of something in our blood that's called platelets. Platelets are necessary for making a clot. Wherever a clot is needed, if you, get a, if you get a little cut in here, then you need to build up a clot. And the clot, at the beginning, we have cells that are called platelets. They come and they aggregate one over the other. And they do all that aggregation at the beginning. They do a little clot. And then all the factors and all the proteins for coagulation come and they do the rest of the part. But at the beginning, platelets are the ones that produce this. Aspirin blocks the aggregation of platelets. So when you have any type of injury and platelets should be the ones coming to do all that aggregation, they just, they don't have the ability of getting and doing the whatever they need to do to aggregate and to get that initial clog in order to stop the bleeding in that part. So what does it have to do with people taking it every single day? Let's remember that in cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, when we get a heart attack, it's because we have something within an artery inside of the heart. Usually they have a plaque of cholesterol and it gets into a point in which that plaque breaks. And when it breaks, platelets come and they do a clog to cover that, but the thing is, they clog and they block all the wall of the artery. One part, it's blocked by the cholesterol, and the other one, it's blocked by all the clog that came up, that came within when that part of the artery became unstable and broke. So when we give a factor that it's not allowing platelets to come and aggregate in that specific part, then I'm not gonna get that clotting. That's why it's been used for several years, for a lot of years, more than 70 years, for the prevention in cardiovascular disease. But it's something very different from whoever we know, and right now it's very easy to know, 
if people have a problem in their coronary arteries, in their brain, in their kidneys, in their eyes, that might lead them to have a clogging in their arteries or to get, it, get them blocked. So I need to give them something to prevent that. It's very different from, or, or someone who already had it to someone who is just thinking that because he's over 40, over 50, over 60, they should be taking that just because. It's completely different. But the first prevention that we need to be talking about is not that cardiovascular disease, it's a deficiency of aspirin or a deficiency of statins. No, cardiovascular disease is a disease caused by habits. We need to remember that the first thing that we need to change in our lives is habits. It's prevention. Prevention comes not by taking a medication once a day. It comes by years of working every single day, changing your habits, your diet, your exercise, the way you sleep, the way you enjoy life, your relations, the exposure to toxins, and do that every single day without pause. So cardiovascular prevention, again, for aspirin, aspirin is something that you can get out of, out of the over the counter anywhere, everywhere, but we shouldn't be taking it as a prevention for cardiovascular disease if we don't have something demonstrated or if we don't have an antecedent of something that went wrong before. So this is something that I want to, you to be aware because I see a lot of people and I receive patients coming in saying that they take aspirin and their physician told them to take aspirin because they were over 50. And we know for sure that that that's something that hasn't shown any benefit at all. And there are also many myths around aspirin. People take aspirin for viral infections, thinking that it might work. No, it might work if you have pain because of the viral infection, but it's it's not going to be useful for the viral infection itself. People think that taking aspirin is beneficial for everyone. And no, that's not true. People have, there are people that cannot take aspirin. Aspirin is not made for kids. Aspirin is not necessary for people in order to have a good life, in order to have cardiovascular prevention. People think that aspirin thins the blood and no, your blood is not getting thinner. Your blood is just losing the ability or the capacity for 11 days, which is the lifespan of a platelet, in order to aggregate, to get one over the other. If you have some, some place where you need a clog or where the artery is exposed, all that aggregation coming in. People think that it is okay for children to be taking aspirin and no, no. There is a common complication that's called Rayet syndrome. Please go and look what is Rayet syndrome. But please remember that children should not take aspirin because this might be a common complication. People think that if you have an allergic reaction with aspirin, they could be mild. They could be something that you can easily overpass. No, there are severe, very severe complications. There are a lot of people that I know that have especially complications with asthmatic reactions in which they get a very, very complicated spasm and they end up in the emergency room with a lot of complications due to an, to an allergy to aspirin. And also people think that aspirin is completely healthy and completely okay for the stomach. And no, a lot of people can bleed because they take a lot of aspirin every single day. So these are things that we need to be aware of. But again, we always have to put in balance which is the benefit and which is the risk of that thing that I'm taking. So right now we know that the complications are real. They can be for sure. Also, if you're bleeding, if you're taking baby aspirin and you're not clogging and if you need a surgery they need to be aware of that then you know that the risk of you getting a cardiovascular disease it's high so that's why you take aspirin so the benefit could be higher than this risk that you have but if you don't have an indication to be using aspirin if you have a lower risk then the risk is very high to be taking aspirin versus the benefit, which is none. So we need to bring consciousness and we need to bring this knowledge so you can know 
that not everyone should be taking aspirin and that things have changed and that we shouldn't we shouldn't be thinking that the only way of making medicine is by taking medicine creating health it's made by habits maybe you can put some things like the cherry on top of the of the ice cream that could be a medication that could be a supplement but the base everything underneath should be habits so please 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 remember that what are the things that i want you to know aspirin for pain is it good yeah it's good aspirin for what's needed for cardiovascular prevention in whoever has a higher risk or whoever had an event before could be needed it could be necessary it could aspirin is necessary for prevention for, for someone that doesn't have a risk no and please remember that if you like these videos just the best way to support us it's very easy just to share them share them with your contacts and if you haven't done so please also hit the like button subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell so every time we make a new video you're going to be the first one to be notified thank you so much and i'll see you next time